She's one of the largest ships sailing our oceans. She's as tall as a 10-story building. And in a year, she travels two-thirds the distance to the moon. Well, this is job to keep out of my way, but it's not moving. In 12 months, she carries nearly 200,000 containers, a cargo worth $4.5 billion, cargo that must be delivered intact and on time. Yet this huge ship has a crew of only 22 who have to be ready for any conditions. Any emergency. All ship personnel to your boat no ship. See any light? And must be ready to defend their ship against desperate marauders. Modern day pirates. The Atlanta's mission? Transporting and protecting a mountain of very valuable cargo. Come experience life aboard a maritime megastructure. Witness the mechanics and machinations of life at sea. Okay, I'll go ahead, thank you. Five or ten. Okay. And visit the bustling ports that feed the ever-growing world of trade. Welcome aboard the OOCL Atlanta, a mega ship, a true giant of the ocean. The Atlanta is one of the latest and largest class of container ships. Known as Post Panamax, she and her kind are too wide to sail through the Panama Canal. If she were a naval vessel, she'd be the equivalent of an aircraft carrier with a crew of several thousand men. The Atlanta has a crew of just 22 ranging from a handful of ordinary seamen who work to keep the Atlanta ship shape at all times. Five engineers keep the ship's engines, power plants, and operating systems up and running. And a team of four officers work in shifts around the clock. Junior officers stand watch and keep a close eye on the weather. Second officer, Law, is responsible for navigation and communications. First Officer Jonathan oversees all the crew, the safety, and daily running of the ship and all cargo load. At the team's head is a captain who's spent all his working life at sea. Starboard 10. Starboard 10. Captain Roger Llewellyn is a man with salt water coursing through his veins. And over the years, he's developed some interesting sleeping habits. One eye open. Always. We sleep with one eye open because at 25, 26 knots, you've got to jump out and up there. Up there is the bridge, and that's where the sailor who never sleeps has spent most of his last 30 years. He's sailed every ocean on the planet and visited every nation that borders the sea. Right now, the Atlanta is in the Malacca Straits, heading from Port Kalang, Malaysia, to Singapore then north to Hong Kong. It's a hectic schedule on a crowded route. Zero five zero. Zero five zero. A lot of traffic not doing what they're supposed to do, a lot of traffic not reporting. So you've got to have eyes at the back of your head, you've got to keep an eye out for everything moving, especially small coastal traffic. We've got one here, not reported, you see, he's trying to get across the bow. When the Atlanta blows her horn, you'd be well advised to move out of her way. Her vital statistics are staggering. From bow to stern, the Atlanta is 323 meters long. That's over a thousand feet. In fact, if you could tip the Atlanta up on her bow, she'd edge out the Eiffel Tower. The area of her top deck is greater than two football fields. Fully laden, the Atlanta weighs more than 300 jumbo jets. On her normal route, she carries cargo from Southeast Asia to the west coast of America and back again every 42 days. These ocean giants make the Earth very small. It is a village, because one minute we're in the east, 
next minute we're in the west. Very little time between the two. So we're constantly plying the world with manufactured goods. Mega ships like the Atlanta help keep the wheels of global commerce turning. Over half the world's cargo is carried in containers. In one year, nearly 20 million containers are moved a total of 300 million times. It's a payload worth almost five trillion dollars. The Atlanta may be loaded down, but she still has to be on time. She runs to schedule for thousands and thousands of miles. She'll arrive on time. In Singapore, containers are arriving from all around the region. Some have a date with the Atlanta. These transfers must be planned with military precision. It's a chain where a weak link means a cargo gets delayed, or even worse, lost. The bottom line, the cargo must be at port waiting when the Atlanta docks. Two particular pieces of cargo due for the Atlanta started their journey several thousand kilometers away in Australia. One is precious and fragile. A shipment of 999 cartons of wine from the lush vineyards of South Australia. The other is also a gourmet delight, but this time highly perishable. A container load of sweet succulent prawns. Both the wine and seafood are bound for shops and restaurants in Hong Kong, and both will require extreme care and constant supervision. The Atlanta's due in Singapore in less than 24 hours, but there's a problem. Third mate. Yes, that's correct, over. Third mate. Yeah, obviously Atlanta, the master here. I sent it yesterday and I sent it again this morning when I left Port Calais. Port procedures are very strict. I give up. Without the right paperwork, ships can't enter a country's waters. Third mate, keep him there, tell him. Instead of the last ten ports which you've already got, I'll just send you Port Calais. Okay, no problem, no problem. Aye, aye. The captain must keep to schedule. He has 2,200 containers to move in Singapore. And he must get there on time. The Atlanta is steaming towards Singapore Harbor and the planned 2,200 container moves. This megaship is purpose-built for one thing only, to carry cargo. A mountain of cargo. All up, she can carry 8,063 20-foot containers. These are the lashing bars and the turn muffles up. These are 20-foot. You can load 20s and you can load 40s. Either or. But they still need lashing forward and aft to keep them fixed in position. Even though she hasn't yet reached her full load capacity, the captain still likes to check on the containers from the top to the very bottom. Where we are now, we're 13.6 meters underwater now. Down here, the containers are stacked nine high. So they go nine high, and then on deck, another six to eight high. So roughly, we're stacking 17 high. From the very bottom of the stack, over 13 meters below the water, the containers rise over 44 meters. On land, it would look like a city block rising 10 stories. If laid end to end, those containers would stretch further than an Olympic marathon, nearly 50 kilometers. A little over 40 years ago, it was a different story. Products like wine would have been transported in a variety of simple boxes, and moving frozen foods